Hello and welcome to part three of effective, okay, I just had a mind blank there. Part three of effective practice. So again, this is a series where I, instead of talking about what to practice, I just talk about some tips and methods in how. So met the method idea, the how to practice, some ways, some tips that you, you can take and glean from, you can perhaps apply into your practice into your time of uh, practice. That's probably the third or fourth time I've said practice already. And that's the fifth time. So anyways, this is just something to help those that are beginning, those that are maybe intermediate, perhaps those that are even advanced, but are, are, are looking for some refreshing, some, uh, some ideas, uh, some extra gleaning, some, some tips, or some ways that someone else, how someone else may do it. This is not rule or law. It's not uh, the only way. There are many different ways. And I guess I don't really have to say that, but sometimes we feel like we have to say these things because of all of the internet trolls out there. Anyways, this is part three. And before I go into what exactly we're going to talk about today, I just want to remind you if you have not already to hit that subscribe button, hit the notification so you'll be notified of any future videos coming up. I've got some really cool things that are on the horizon and I'd love for you to be a part of all of that and to know what's happening next. So yeah, hit that subscribe button. So let's jump right into it. As you probably have noticed while I've been rambling on and on is that there's a maraca on my congas. I was gonna do this with a shaker, but my shakers are in storage downstairs and I didn't feel like going and grabbing them. I just wanted to hit record and do this video. So a maraca will work. It'll work for this video. Anyways, what I wanted to talk about is practicing two different things at once. And I'm gonna use a maraca and talk about shakers and maracas, uh, steady ostinato pattern while playing uh, rhythms with the other hand or even the, your feet. Um, but my, my, I'm going to use a maraca and the congas as my pivot point to talk about w how to get better at doing these two different things. Sometimes, when it, well, in my journey in along my path as I was practicing independence. I would get frustrated and, and, and I would hear various teachers say things like, um, well, you have to split your mind or, or um, you know, split your brain or split your limbs and stuff like that. But that, that, that sounds extraterrestrial. And what does that mean? You know, I, that didn't really help me because I didn't understand what that means. And if anything, it just made me frustrated because I felt like maybe it's something that I can't achieve. But the good news is that it's something that you can achieve. And it's something that you can achieve in a reasonable amount of time if you're using effective methods and you have patience. So patience is key because sometimes it feels like something is taking too long when in fact it's not. And if you just go ahead and stop and take the time and slow down and work on it in some correct fashion, you'll actually get to your, your expected or hoped uh, outcome in a faster manner, a more efficient manner. So. All that said, um, one of the most effective ways of being able to do two things at once, and I'm going to talk about playing a beat so and, and playing a shaker at the same time. So the way that I'm going to play the shaker is just a steady uh, pattern, which is something like this. So I'm playing an accent on two and four. One, two, three. Actually on every beat. One, two, three, four. Okay? It could be anything. It could be just on two and four. Right? It could be on the end. Right? Whatever. But I'm going to do it on every beat to keep this straight. And then I'm going to play a simple, uh, what well, simple, I'm going to play a pattern uh, on, with my right hand. So, um, bit of improvisation there but how do I get to the to the point where I'm able to do that with uh, relative ease again the goal is not to just be able to do something but to be able to do it to the point where you don't have to concentrate too much on it so you can actually enjoy it 
And if you're playing with other people or someone singing and this is not too difficult, then you can also listen to everyone else that's playing and get a full enjoyment and then be able to express yourself. And also the more you master being able to do this and then this, then you can get to the point of improvising and not losing the beat, not losing the tempo, okay? Not losing wherever the one was and coming back in. So one of the, uh, just a tip, and this is some obvious stuff that I'm gonna say, there's really no, there's no secret and there's really no, uh, um, there's no get to it quick method. There's no, there's no shortcut is what I wanted to say. So, but one way to do it is just to practice one of those things over and over with constant repetition. Now, this can get boring, so you wanna make it fun. Put on a favorite song and just practice playing that shaker pattern. Do that while watching, practice doing this while watching a, a TV show, while watching a TV show, while um, if you're in the car, bring your shaker with you while you're driving. Now, maybe I shouldn't say this because I don't, I want to make sure that everyone is concentrating when they're behind the wheel, but you may have a shaker and when you come to a stoplight, every time you come to a stoplight and you do that for a couple weeks and you have that shaker in the car, you're waiting for your kids to pick them up at the pickup line, uh, at daycare, you have a in-between meetings, lunch break in the car, whatever. You wanna find those areas throughout the day and practice that one little thing. Well, a shaker, if that's the case, or if it's that one pattern with that one hand, that's something you can actually do in your car. That's something you can do in your car while waiting for someone, okay? That's something you can do while watching a TV show. All right, that's something you can probably do while watching a very boring play or something that you have to go and attend with a loved one. You really don't, but you're being supportive and there's a bunch of downtime. Well, I'm not saying you bring a shaker and be all obvious out in front of everyone, but it might be something that you just tap very lightly where no one can hear on an armrest. But this is the out of box thinking, how we can fit in these practices. now. Again, don't do anything to get you in trouble and say, well, this guy on YouTube told me to play the shaker during my kid's play. We don't want you to do that. I want you to be present. I want you to be there. Be a loving dad, mom, whatever. Anyways, practice that one thing. Now, when I, I actually practice shaker patterns, and I've practiced shaker patterns in the past before where I just, but I also played shakers so much that it was second nature. Now, you might want to practice them not just with your left hand if you're left-handed, but with your right hand so that you can switch while doing other things, okay? So just practice that. If you can do that while having a conversation, now we can get on to doing the other thing. So practice that with a block of time. Remember we spoke about blocks of time, all right? Practice that in a block of time. Now, practice that, then practice the other rhythm that you're going to be doing simultaneously with your other hand. Do that within a block of time over and over and over and over to a metronome, okay? Once you've gotten to the point where you can have a conversation doing that, now try to bring them together, okay? Now, the thing that's the easiest, don't think about it. Play it and then just turn that part of your mind off and see that's the thing. You should be able to get to the point where you can do this and not think about it too much, okay? You should be able to just like something that's key and this is on my one of my other videos where I talk about things that every conga player and it's not just congas but that you should develop is and one of them is the ability to keep time. You should be able, this is on the very basic level, but you should be able to tap your foot to the tempo of the song, whether it's in quarter notes, eighth notes, or sixteenth notes. You should be able to tap, if it's just those quarter notes, you should be able to tap your foot along and play whatever rhythm. If you're not able to do that, you want to start practicing that. Start getting to the point where you can do that because that's very important and that will help in your ability to, to strengthen your independence. Now, I can do this and talk to you and not think about it. I can do this and actually think about it and squeeze every variation out of it. 
Or I can just say, I'm just going to set this pattern and not going to think about it and just say, we'll just keep playing that. I'm like a computer that has a program open while I go and run another program, right? Hopefully your computer is able to run more than one program. And that's what your brain has to do. Well, your brain is like the computer that has that program mastered, that has that program right, a, able to run it efficiently, okay? While then, I, say, I put that on automatic, and now I say, okay, well, what's the rhythm? Sing it. Boom, bop. Boom, da, boom, ba, boom, ba, boom, ba, boom, boom, ba, boom, ba, boom, boom. Sing it, then try to play the first note. Boom, ba. There's the first two. Sing again. Boom, ba. Another thing is, I'm playing this at a very fast tempo if you were just learning how to do this, so don't try to play it at that tempo. Okay, now if the first two notes are easy, but then the third note is hard, boom, the bot, boom. If that third note is hard and you keep messing up on it, try to figure out why you keep messing up on it. Figure out why it's hard. So now this comes to the, the notion of where these notes, this and this, line up and practice where they are. So if we're going. Oh, so it's when I do the upbeat and this is on the downbeat or this is on an and and this is on the actual number. So like one and boom, the bop, boom, boom. So I'm playing that when the shaker's coming back, this is actually on the upbeat as well. But when the plate, when the, when my hand is going down, my shaker's going back. Maybe that motion is is unique or is difficult, it's different for you. So you have to practice that. So you practice. I'm doing a bass note or two open notes. See how I'm practicing that. take that part out and just practice that one thing so then when you go back to this see that then it becomes natural so these are some ideas and ways that you can start to work on this independence so I started by practicing just one thing as simple as it may seem even if it's just a shaker therein lies a problem if you say just a shaker because it's not just right there is an infinite amount of virtuosity that can be squeezed out of that one thing so practice that that thing that shaker and then sign independently and then practice this thing over here independently then break down each note and find out where the problem is and find out where they line up and then practice that one thing where they line up and i guarantee you that after a while And just a side note, when playing the shakers, when playing shakers and playing the congas or the cajon, especially like in rock music, let's say, or pop, with that, you know, backbeat type of, of rhythm, where a lot of people may have a problem is where the upbeat is or when, when, when the one hand is going forward down on the drum, if it's a cajon or the conga, and the other shaker is coming back because we tend to want to do things at the same time. When... The two parts of the body are going in different directions and emotions. Sometimes that's when we start having difficulty. So practicing that will actually help. Um, that's just what I found find that with people that when I've taught doing those using the shaker and playing the different rhythm. Now, when it comes to playing the cajon or the congas with a singer songwriter, having the ability to do different shaker patterns and improvising on the drum will bring your playing to a whole nother level and thus be able to bring so much more to the song because now you can add different layers and you don't have to worry about just playing the steady beat but you can also add some um, some inflections to it you can add some different layers to it so these are just some ideas when it comes to getting to that point 
How is it in effective practice? Well, it's, remember, I was talking about practicing one thing that way that you want to play it, okay? And then practicing the other way that way that you want to play it till you're able to have a conversation with each one independently. Then start to put them together, okay? That's one way I do it. I, for, for a long time, I had a hard time with playing a clave independently with my left foot. So what I decided to do was, even when I wasn't at my drums, if I was in the car, well, guess what? I'm mostly using, here in the States, I'm, I'm using my right foot with the brakes and the gas pedal. And so I said, well, with my left foot, I'm just going to constantly play clave patterns to a salsa song or a rumba or whatever it is. And I was going to practice that. And I was going to keep doing it until I could actually have a conversation. So I don't even have to think about it. Same thing I would do with my left hand or my right hand playing that clave pattern. And just being able to, I was just, every time I had a free moment, I'm telling you, my leg might after a while really get tired, but within a few weeks of doing that all the time, I was able to really master it. Now, most of the time, that's when I don't have to focus on a whole lot or I'm at a stoplight or I'm actually not moving and I'm waiting in a line somewhere at a drive through or picking up my kids. So make sure you're staying focused on the road. All right, that's just some ideas uh, for effective practice. This is part three. I think it was part three, was it part three? Anyways, if you haven't subscribed, don't forget, hit that subscribe button and so you'll be notified of videos coming up. All right, that's it for today. I'll see you soon.